Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Dylan Bowman before the 2013 North Face Endurance Challenge. How you doing, Dylan? Really well, thanks. I uh, haven't seen you uh, in a while, um, but it's uh, good to have you out here. You, uh, you've had a good year so far. Uh, you ran really well this spring down at Ray Miller and uh, Miwok and uh, Fifth of Western States. Yeah. Um, and what have you uh, done since then? Well, I had a nice vacation to Europe. Uh, that was supposed to include a run at UTMB. Uh, unfortunately, I, I hurt myself there, um, and it's taken me a while to get back healthy and training. Uh, last month, I went down to Nevada and ran Ian Torrance's race, the bootlegger 50K, mm -hmm. which was a really fun sort of training race for this, but I'm healthy and happy to be training again. Yeah, um, what did happen with your ankle? It was uh, just a really severe uh, sprain when I was training in Europe. Um, basically, the first run I went on when I was in Chamonix, um, just stepped on a rock just the wrong way, and, and it just went. So um, it's been three and a half months now. It's still something that sort of um, affects me, but it's more of like a, a mental thing now, more so than a, a physical problem. So, so it's not going to slow you down on the course no. physically, but steep downhill... It's something I'll think about while I'm out there, yeah. but I don't think it'll affect me now. No. Um, how was your fitness at, uh, at uh, Bootlegger? You were fifth at uh, the USATF 50K Championships. Yeah, I was happy. It was just a good uh, reintroduction to racing. You know, I, I definitely was, uh, feel, I, you know, I, I feel like I was uh, pretty smart in how I raced. I wasn't totally happy with my performance, but, you know, after the break that I had and the injury that I had, um, it was a super fun time, a uh, good reintroduction, and should serve me well uh, from a training perspective for this race. Gotcha. You were seventh year last year, if I remember correctly, and uh, since then you have moved to uh, the Mill Valley area. Uh, I don't know exactly which town, but basically very near the course. Mm -hmm. You know it really well now. How much of an advantage do you think that is going into a race like this? I certainly hope it's an advantage, but yes, you're right. I mean... I live uh, very, very near the course and train on it nearly every day. Um, so from that perspective, I think uh, I'm totally prepared. I certainly won't get lost. Um, and I mean, it's a great course. I'm, I'm really excited for us to be able to run the original course since it got uh, sort of thwarted last year with the weather. Um, so it'll just be really fun to have the whole community out here and, and racing on my new sort of home trails. Yeah, you definitely have a lot of friends at aid stations and on the course, so that'd be great. Um, what's interesting in a race like this, it is so very deep, and especially, you know, from the just very top guys to 30 back. How do you go into it shooting for a performance? Like, do you go in with a mindset that it is all out from the gun, I'm going for the win, or do you just set expectations on where you want to be in there? How does that play out in your head? It's a good question, and for me, it's almost always something that I figure out during the race. Um, I try to avoid drafting any serious plan. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'll do is try and stay with the group as long as I can. If it feels like uh, some people are going too hard, um, I'll make those decisions on the fly. I uh, have certainly been doing the kind of training that I think is necessary to do well here, and that's running fast. Um, so I, I certainly hope to have a good day, um, but if it, if, if it comes down to a point where I feel like my pace is unsustainable, then hopefully I'll be smart enough to, to make those decisions on the fly. Gotcha. Has the sort of structure of your training changed since you've moved from a Colorado Rockies out here? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And really in just the last couple months since since my injury, um, yeah, I'm now working with Jason Coop and uh, he has me do a ton of really intense um, sort of lactate threshold style uh, work, which is something I'm totally unfamiliar with, um, but it's great. I mean, I feel really fit. It's added a, a new dimension and I think, you know, when I was in college, I felt like I, I was really fast back then. Mm -hmm. and, and I think I had lost some of that since in the last few years. Um, so it's, it feels good to sort of feel fast again. Um, and hopefully that's something that will allow me to have a good race on Saturday. There's a lot of fast guys out there this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, you've at least given a little bit of thought about who's going to be up there. Who would be your top five? Oh, man. <laughs> 
Well, I don't know. I mean, I think Dakota's do a, a win here um, on this course. You know, the kid's just crazy talented. And um, beyond that, you know, obviously Miguel's got a good track record here. Yeah. I think guys like Alex Nichols, um, who passed me at like mile 42 last year and beat me by seven minutes or something. I think he's definitely somebody to, to look out for. A Adam Campbell has a good track record with, you know, a third and fourth. Um, you know, a local guy, Jorge Maravilla, I think, uh, you know, he's definitely somebody to look out for. He's the biggest sandbagger in the field uh, himself. So definitely look beyond just the, the huge international names. There's, there's a lot of other talent in there as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's probably 15 guys that can look at them. Awesome. Well, uh, best of luck. Going Thanks, being one of them this weekend. I hope so. All right. Thanks a lot.